Today we're continuing on our series of 5 things you probably should already know about RuneScape but maybe you didn't. So these are some lots of useful tips and tricks and all that sort of stuff, hidden things just about the game that you should have already known about. But in this one, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Armin off of YouTube. You have given me so many of these that I can just throw in and out of the videos to make them a little bit easier to make. So thank you very, very much. I will definitely be using a few of those in this video and future ones as well. And I'll be mixing some of my own in and some others from other comments as well. But anyway, like I said, you should probably probably know most of these things or a lot of people will know some of these things but hopefully in here there's gonna be some stuff that you didn't know about just yet and it maybe will help you out just a little bit of quality of life or even just some super interesting stuff so hopefully you do find something and let's go Okay, so our first one today is actually from a comment from the last video as well And they said what they were doing is when they were doing rune crafting They were going into their bank and they were getting their rune pouches say they would load um, I don't know they would load up a preset and they would get all their pouches like this now that obviously I don't have a preset for this So I'll just have to show you they'll load the presets and the essence would be all in their inventory then they'd come out of the preset fill the pouches like this and then go back in get more essence out uh, and then go and do their run that's how they were doing it but they said i actually recently found out that you can actually just completely fill your pouches from here now you don't have to click them or anything like that you right click and you press fill 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 and obviously if there's space in them mine are currently full then they will they will do that you can also empty them as well if there's any reason to do that so you can they'll go into your inventory so if you empty this like this it will empty out into your inventory and you can do all this in your bank too so you can just you can load up your thing you can the rest fill on your, your pouches like this and then you can just get your essence out uh, or load a preset after that so you would load the preset then you'd go in and you'd fill 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 and then it's nice and easy it saves a lot of time now you can actually just to add to this as well is if you have the i'm gonna have actually got it on me i don't but i'm gonna reclaim this uh, to show you guys I believe it's the body uh, if you are wearing the the body let's have a look where this you can actually fill this as well fill from bank and you can add that as well um or you have to have the full outfit okay that's fine but if you had the full outfit you could come in here and you can actually fill the the body from here as well you don't have to do it um when you come out or anything you can do it from the bank just the same as the room pouches meaning you can get a little bit also you can fill your law ethereal body if you guys didn't know this there's another little bit so there's quite a few in this one hopefully something was useful but there we go a few people commented under this saying they didn't know either so i figured i'd include it okay for this next one we're going to be heading to the softenham slayer dungeon now for this one it is actually pretty useful and probably a good way to make a bit of extra money if you are going to be in here anyway now if you trade this guy obviously we need the feathers in the first place but that's not what we're doing here we're going to buy 50 just for the example normally you would probably want more but if you are in this dungeon this treasure chest here you can toggle the auto collect so you can have it so it doesn't but drops have a 20 percent chance of being doubled or you can toggle it toggle it so that it does right but even if this is let's let me just kill something just really really quick to show you guys exactly what i mean let's kill one scorpion here we don't want to crash this guy we don't want to ruin his day we're literally just gonna kill just one and then get out of here kill 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 there we go right the loot that it drops goes directly into this chest as you can see here now when we search this chest there's still a certain amount of space you can actually fill this chest up and not have it collect your vital sparks by taking the vital sparks out and then getting another item in there. If you fill that up, anything that extra will actually drop to the ground, meaning that it still has that chance of being doubled even though the auto collect is on. So if you have this full, you can have everything going in here, but your vital sparks going to the ground. Now you can also have coins as well, not going here as well. And then you can maybe have your um, wealth accumulator if you have one of those, collect all the coins and they'd get doubled as well as well as a 20% chance for it to happen. Uh, but obviously vital sparks are pretty expensive. Let's just quickly run to the grand exchange. If you're AFKing here and you just wanted to keep an eye out for your vital spark, but uh, a vital spark right now is 500K. Do they even buy for that is a question. Let's have a look. Let's just put it up a little bit. Probably about that to be fair. Yeah, 543k for one vital spark. So if you have the 20% chance of doubling these as well, that's a pretty good amount of money increase when you're AFKing in there. So especially for people like Iron Men who are looking to get these to maybe make the abilities out of it. Um, I think it's limitless that you get from these now. Um, so if, if you are looking to farm these, then this is something you can do as well. Uh, but also just, just for a bit of extra money. If anything drops outside of the chest because the chest is full, it will still have that 20% chance of being doubled. 
So number three is knowing that it's actually better to kill certain monsters or NPCs, I suppose, or just, just any sort of monsters or slayer monsters with legacy mode rather than EOC, just certain ones. Now this is usually because it is faster to kill them or they're pretty much closer to one hit in them if you're in legacy mode anyway and a good example of this is going to be the revenant so we're going to head to the revenant's cave while i show you that there are other examples as well um while we get there let me just make sure we get this cave entrance there so the other examples are things that are going to be like um if i pronounce this wrong i'm so sorry the capsarius things the, the moss columns and also the crystal shapeshifters now this information again came from armin so thank you armin i do appreciate it please don't burn me dragons if we come here, I'm going to show you guys using uh, EOC to kill these revenants off. And then we're going to quickly change the legacy to show you again. So we're going to hop over and we're going to attack this Cyclops here. Now, it probably still won't take a long time to kill it, obviously. But you can see it does take a few attacks. You know, you gotta you got to go through. you got to use your abilities still. Some abilities are weaker than others, like your um, impact and stuff. However, if you are using legacy mode, let me quickly run over here out of range of the other revenants. And then we can change over to Legacy, which, by the way, if you didn't know, you can change just there. These do tend to be mostly one hit when you are in Legacy mode, as the, the actual hits that you're going to be doing are rather high. It does make killing these quite a lot easier. So yes, some monsters are better to kill in Legacy mode. I believe using melee here is actually the preferred option. I could be wrong, uh, but obviously you guys know what I'm like. Magic is just how I do it. So yeah, but uh, just keep in mind that certain places... It is better to use legacy. This next one is going to require us to take a look at our bank and it's about the bank pin as well. So we're going to head over to the bank here and uh, it's something that I found out about recently and was kind of surprised I didn't know about it already and I don't personally use it still but it is super useful and I think people probably could benefit from it especially if you are wanting to like if you're worried that your account may get compromised or something uh, then it might be worth doing but honestly I didn't know this. If you go into your bank, you go to your bank pin, you can actually set your authenticator as a bank pin. So rather than using your regular bank pin in game, you can use the authenticator that is tied to your account. Now you will obviously want to have the authenticator linked to your account in the first place, uh, and you should have this if you haven't already. Um, and one other thing you can do in here, which is, in, I say, I think everybody should do this. Like, unless you have a specific reason not to, I think everybody should do this. Change your recovery delay to seven days. So if I click it now, it's gonna change to three days, right? And if someone gets onto my account, It'll only take them three days to actually remove my pin. It will only take three days. But if I change this to seven days, then it's going to take them longer. And it gives me longer to react to this and get like back onto my account and sort this out. If it's only three days, you go away for the weekend or something, come back, your account could be gone. If it's seven days, it gives you a lot longer to deal with this and keep your items safe. Uh, but that and having your authenticator as a bank pin could be some extra steps for security if you are worried about this. Uh, the authenticator, I don't use this personally, but it's something you just the option that you do have. Uh, but change your recovery delay at least to have that to seven days. The longer, the better. There's no reason not to have this. If you forget it, it is what it is. You just wait the seven days. If someone gets a new account, they have to, you know, it takes them longer. And if it's only three days, then. You know, it's, it's just not as good. So, have it set to seven days. And also, if you do want to use Authenticator, there you go. Okay, again, this last one is from Armin as well. And I actually am so shocked about this. I, this is genius. This is actually genius. Now, this only works through the events like we've got now. Uh, but we are going to get these events pretty often. They're the paper ones. I probably could have teleported from the paper. Uh, but we're going to show you anyway. Uh, now, you, when you open these presents, you get a hell of a lot of junk just added to, to yourself, right? You just, you just get a lot of junk and you have to drop it all or put it in your bank and sort it out. And it can be a pain in the ass. However, he points out, if you get a yak, okay, or any beast of burden that you have access to, and then we're going to quickly get some wrapping paper uh, from our treasure and keys real quick, and I'll be back once I've done that. Okay, so with that done, we've got ourselves 1,658 wrapping paper. Now, if we have a beast of burden and we hand in this stuff, now, obviously, you're going to have to just assume that I had more paper than this and my inventory is going to fill up more wrap, wrapping paper, more, more presents and stuff. When you open these up, you get all these random items. You can actually give them to your beast of burden rather than actually having to drop them and it does it all straight away. Then all you have to do is claim your rand random stuff, the, the, the good stuff like the XP and stuff. This is all fine. This is good. But the stuff that you don't want to individually like drag out and drop on the floor, you can just give it to the beast of burden. 
this is genius because once you're done and you filled it all up and you just keep pressing give, 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 it's all going to stack up in here. At the end, you just dismiss the familiar like this and all that stuff will just drop to the floor. It's done. If you want to keep this stuff, obviously just chuck it in the bank, but you can still add it to the Beast of Bird and then go to the bank and add it in there. This is incredibly convenient. I, I, holy crap, when you hand in a lot of paper, it can actually take a lot of time to have to organize this stuff, add it to the bank or drop it on the floor or do whatever you're doing with it. Get a Beast of Bird and instantly put all of it in there. That's it's just so smart. It's just so smart. So thank you very much for this one. And if you, I'm sure there's plenty of you can use this in the future. There's going to be more events like this in the future. Um, we've been getting them quite a lot. So hey, add your party food for that. And it's whew, I don't know. This one blew me away. And there we go. Five more things that you should know about RuneScape, but maybe, just maybe, you didn't. Now, I actually learned a few things in this one myself as well, so that is pretty damn good to know. And I always like adding those ones because I've been around in RuneScape a long time. So when I find stuff that I didn't know, I'm pretty confident that a lot of other people also wouldn't have known it too, or, you know, that it's not perfectly full common knowledge. So if you guys uh, did find something in here, let me know in the comments which one <laughs> you didn't know about uh, but otherwise thank you all so so much for watching i appreciate it, and i'll catch you all in the next one see you later guys bye